All right, I think we're going to get started. People are still kind of coming in the back, but the room's full. So um, I guess people have heard of containers then. Um, or, or everyone's here for Cloud Foundry, which is probably more like it. Um, so containers versus or and Cloud Foundry. Um, I'm Julian Friedman. I work for IBM. This is George, works for Pivotal. We are gardeners. Um, we want to talk to you about um, five things today. The first three um, go quite quickly. Um, the first is, what's a cloud? What are we talking about when we talk about clouds? The second is, what's a foundry? Which I'm sure everyone has been wondering. Um, what do we mean by foundry? What's the value add of Cloud Foundry? Uh, and the third thing is, what is a container? Uh, what, a, what is this container concept? Um, and then we're going to try and suggest that um, Cloud Foundry is actually an amazing way to run containers. Um, so everyone thinks of Cloud Foundry as this. You push code, um, and containers is just an implementation detail at the bottom. But we're going to try and suggest that actually Cloud Foundry is a pretty great way to run containers too. Um, and then we're going to situate Cloud Foundry and Garden against some of the other things. It's a kind of summary. So let's get started. Uh, so we need to talk about cloud. Um, and to do that, we have to go back in time a little bit. Yeah. We're all now back in time, right? Um, uh, so we're, we're, it's now the year 2000 or something, and someone's had a brilliant idea for clouds. Um, and what that meant was you're a user. And you say to the cloud, hey, give me a server. And the cloud says, all right, here is a server, right? And that was actually pretty great, right? That's what we meant by cloud for a little while. And that made lots of people lose money, and it made things way simpler, pretty awesome. But then we realized that actually there was a lot more that we could do for users, right? Hey, give me a server wasn't the end of that story. And what we actually wanted to do is build something on top that made life a lot simpler, that let people stop worrying about all the things that you have to do after, hey, give me a server, right? Um, and for the sake of argument, let's call that a foundry or a PaaS, right? The value add on top of cloud. And it's a different abstraction, right? So a user, instead of saying, give me a server, says, here's my code. And the cloud says, great, I'll deal with that, right? It's a different direction. Um, and behind the scenes, the cloud could deal with packaging, and it could deal with middleware, and OS management, and logging, and metrics, and services, and health checking, and scaling, and patching, and on and on and on. Right? All the things you need after, hey, give me a server. But at the back end, what we were doing is we were saying, hey, give me a server. right? And the cloud was saying, all right, here's your server. And we still had to figure out packaging, and middleware, and OS management, and logging, and metrics, and services. <laughs> And on and on and on, right? There was still a lot of complexity for us to actually implement one of these things. So now we need to talk about containers, right? Because we needed to make this easier. We needed to figure out how to run this on the back end in a way that made sense. So what is a container? Well, basically, a uh, container is an OS image, so a package bundled OS image plus some metadata that tells you how to actually run that image. And you bundle those together into something that you can ship around and deploy. Right? So then you can take that bundled OS image with the metadata tells you what to run in that image and move it around and have it run. And what does that mean? It means we can now say to the cloud, here is a container. And the cloud can say, OK. And suddenly, we've dealt with OS management and packaging and middleware. That's now simple. We can let that layer take care of that. But we do still need to worry about logging and metrics and services and health checking and scaling and patching and all those other things that you need after here is a container. Actually, I just want to point this, thing, this, this out. What we're really talking about when we talk about push code and not containers, we didn't know the word yet, but that's serverless. So what we're talking about is you don't care about all this stuff back here. You're just pushing code. That's really what serverless means. But now the word has come back around. Um, but maybe you actually do want to care. Because for some applications, you do 
want to go down to that lower level, and you want to care about some of the lower level detail. So maybe you actually, I have no idea what just happened. La, la, la. Never trust technology. Um, maybe you actually want to push containers, right? Maybe you do want to go to that bottom layer, because that will solve the OS management package. Maybe you want to take care of those yourselves. And you want the platform to still provide all those other things, the logging, the metrics, the services, the health checking, the scaling, the patching, all those other things that go along with the platform. But you want to deal with that top bit. You want to provide the container bit. Well, actually, it turns out we don't have to push code, right? We've built a really great system for moving around containers. We were just using it to implement the platform as a service bit. But CF is actually a great container orchestrator. We can use CF as a container orchestrator and have all of the advantages of CF. And that's what George is now going to demonstrate. Right. Is the font size good for those in the back? Make it bigger. How is it now? Sure. All right. All right. Uh, so, let me see. So, we're going to start by building uh, a Docker image that can be used as a Cloud Foundry application. And, oops, that's going too fast. I thought live demos were bad. I mean, pre-recorded demos are also bad, apparently. All right. So we're going to build a Docker image, and then we're going to use it to spawn containers in Cloud Foundry. And this is not a new feature. This is something that was uh, sipped last year with, uh, with uh, Diego. And um, it's just useful to realize how you can basically run containers with Cloud Foundry. Uh, so OK, I'm just having a, my own directory. And uh, I'm going to start by showing you this Docker image I built. Uh, it's uh, under a GitHub repo, under my username, so you can find it if you want. And uh, this Docker image is basically having two main files. The first one is the app.py. This is a Python application. It's a very simple file. We'll see it right after. And the second one is a Docker file. So let's look at the app.py. Uh, as I said, it's a very simple Python application. And the, the main important thing here is that it prints these two environment variables. So these are Cloud Foundry environment variables. The first one is the random uh, unique ID that uh, Diego assigns to every application, to every application instance. The second one is the application index, uh, the instance index, sorry. Uh, this is a zero-based index uh, of the instance within the list of instances. Uh, the Docker file of this image uh, is very simple as well. So a Docker file is basically describing a Docker image. It's uh, the steps Docker will run, will execute, in order to build your Docker image. And every line in this file is what Docker calls a layer. Uh, so the first layer of this uh, simple image is a Python 3. Uh, we also call it the base layer. Uh, so it's using Python 3. The second one is installing Flask. That's a web framework I'm using. And the third one is adding your code. So this is the step where I'm using only a single file. My code is a single file. But you could imagine that this is like your whole application there. And the last one, the last line, is defining the endpoint. This is what tells Diego uh, what to run when it spawns a container. Uh, this is the whole CF app. There's, there are no YAML files. There will be no uh, source code uploading. Uh, this is it. So let's build and uh, upload this image. So building is basically, as I said, executing all these steps. Uh, there are four lines in the Docker file, so there are four steps in, in the building process. And uploading will upload all these different layers into Docker Hub. Uh, Docker Hub is a public registry for Docker images. And this is what Cloud Foundry also gives by default to download Docker images. Uh, the, the interesting thing here is that layers are cast. So if you change your application code, we, if you remember, we, we place our application code in the third line. That's the third layer. So if you change your application code, you don't have to rebuild the whole image. And also, you don't have to upload the whole image. You will only upload the layers that are changed. Uh, next thing is I'm going to connect to my Cloud Foundry instance. I'm using PCF dev for this demo. 
Uh, and this is a, a virtual machine you can, a Vagrant virtual machine you can download and use in your laptop. Uh, it's, it's free, uh, although probably if you want to download it, you have to give people all your contact details, but you know, it's free. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, I'm using it in my laptop, but I'm using it with four gigabytes of memory, so it's not really heavy. And, uh, and right, yeah. So we logged into our uh, CF uh, installation, and we need to make sure that our CF installation supports running Docker images. And there is this feature flag called Diego Docker, which we have to make sure it's enabled. Uh, this is not enabled in public installations. It's not enabled in Pivotal Web Services, for instance, because um, running arbitrary Docker images is not a good idea if you're multi-tenant, but in PCF dev it's fine. And uh, we can then push our application. So we're running the usual CF push command. The difference here is that this is not uploading any source code. This is not including any YAML files. And uh, the command line argument, which, let's see, that specifies the image is minus O. And we don't need to, to tell it where, which registry to use. As I said, it will use Docker Hub by default. So this is just creating a container using this image. Right, so if you do CF hubs, we see there is a container, there's, uh, there's an application, it has a single instance, and it has uh, a route assigned to it. Uh, let's test the endpoint. So uh, as we saw before, the application will just print these two environment variables. So uh, there are no surprises here. There's only one instance, so the application index, sorry, the instance index is zero. Uh, so let's scale it. Let's create five of them and see what's happening. So we're gonna create five of them and hit the endpoint a couple of times and we're gonna get three different indexes. So zero, two, and one. So what we've seen so far is that uh, you deploy Docker containers in Diego, in Cloud Foundry, and um, you get for free the, the load balancement, so, sorry, load balancing. So there is a route, you send traffic to the route, and this route is then directed into different containers. Uh, there's a there's one advantage and two disadvantages with this, um, this idea. The advantage is that you get all the flexibility in managing your dependencies. So you don't have to depend on build packs, which in some cases is good. The first disadvantage is that you can easily derail yourself from the 12 factor up idea. So you, we all seen Docker images that you know, they, they have multiple uh, services and uh, but they, can, they might write uh, things, they might write data in the container storage, and this is not 12 factors up. This is not what Cloud Foundry is about, and that can be problematic. And the second disadvantage is that since you are now in charge of building this Docker image, of, of maintaining it, of putting your code into it, and shipping it in Cloud Foundry, you are also in charge on patching it. So uh, yesterday we heard Justin saying that uh, software with known vulnerabilities is a, is a big security threat. And this is true. And Cloud Foundry solves this with build packs. If you use Docker images, that's not gonna, you're gonna be in charge of this. So let's go back to the original theme, and this is container registration in Cloud Foundry. So we saw how you can deploy containers, we saw how you can uh, load balance the traffic within containers, and how you can scale them. What's missing? Well, in, in Docker and uh, in, in Kubernetes and all these container orchestrators, you can attach to a container and look at its logs. You can look at its output and you can send some input and uh, interactively and see what's happening. In Cloud Foundry, these are different things. You can attach to a process and look at its output using CF logs as with ordinary applications. So I'm creating some background traffic here, just hitting the endpoint every second and then running CF logs, which will give me back the output. This is the output of the application, so if you have multiple instances, you will get the output from all these instances. And attaching to the container, like trying to interactively debug and manipulate a running container, uh, for that there is CFSSH. This is another not so new feature. It was uh, enabled last year with Diego, with the release of Diego. Uh, but running that, you can jump into a container, so, and just to preview that, I can just run PS. You, you will see all the container processes here. There is an SSH daemon. Uh, there is uh, the app.py, this, yeah. And uh, there's a cell. And this cell has the environment, the CF environment that the application has. So I can, I can refer to 
uh, known environment variables like the, the instance index. This is, this is zero by default. The CFS states will attach to the first container, the first instance, but you can configure that. You can ask uh, for a specific container. Uh, all right. So the last thing uh, I want to show you is what we call CF Docker Bridge. So last year, Jules presented this idea of using Docker as a backend for Cloud Foundry. Uh, it was called Garden Docker, and uh, the idea was that Garden would be the, the front end, it would create containers in Docker, and then the whole Cloud Foundry would use Docker to create containers. And this is something we've been discussing for a long time. CF Docker Bridge is a very diverse idea. So CF Docker Bridge is actually using Docker as an interface, Docker CLI as an interface, and Cloud Foundry as a backend, because we just saw that Cloud Foundry is a container orchestrator. Uh, so I, I just installed CF Docker Bridge. This is a, a Go application, so go get will do. And I uh, have to start the CF Docker Bridge daemon. Uh, I have to define a socket. This is a socket that the Docker client will connect to. And to tell the Docker client where to connect to, we have to export this environment variable. And then just Docker run. So I'm using the same image, the same Docker image as a that I used before. And as you can see in the background, what this is doing is CF push. It's creating a container, which is actually a Cloud Foundry application. And if you run CF apps, there it is. It's your Cloud Foundry application. It's your Docker container. It's your garden container. It's a container foundry. Thank you. Nice. Um, so hopefully I just want to underline what you just saw at the end of that, which is using the regular Docker client with a regular Docker command to push a container, but orchestrating it and scaling it as a regular app inside Cloud Foundry, uh, which shows you just how similar the, sy the systems actually are, but you get for free all the Cloud Foundry stuff. So let's briefly do some comparisons. So just like talk about the differences between some of these things. Um, so firstly, I just want to talk about the back-end container technologies that are going on here. Because last year, we were talking about Garden Docker, and Garden Docker was an experimental back-end for Garden, which, instead of using Garden's own custom code, used Docker Engine to run CF workloads. Um, now I'm happy to say uh, that we're running on Garden Run C, so Garden Run C is the new backend that's currently moving through Diego's CI pipelines, which uses Run C. Uh, what is Run C? Well, Run C is the container engine part of Docker. So Docker has spun that out as a separate project. Uh, it's donated it to a foundation that's also part of the Linux Foundation with multiple companies owning it. Um, and so we're now using that code. It's the same code that Docker's using. Um, because it's the same code Docker is using, it's the same code Kubernetes is using. Um, so the only thing that wasn't using it was Garden Linux, um, but Garden Run C is now uh, in Diego's CI pipeline, so hopefully Garden Linux will soon go away. Uh, and then actually, whichever container orchestrator you use, you're really just spinning up Run C containers. It's all exactly the same container technology at the back. So what really matters is the user experience, right? What does a user see? What's, what's, what, go, what does a user think about when they come to the system? Uh, well, Docker is containers, right? Everything's containers, just push containers. Uh, Kubernetes has these declarative pod specs, uh, which are actually more complicated than containers, um, but they're still really very low level things that you have to understand. Um, Cloud Foundry is code, right? Pushes your code, we'll figure out how to run it. But if you want to give us a container, that works too. We're not opinionated about that. Uh, we can actually do either one of those things. Um, so what does that mean for the cell API, the thing that runs on each one of the nodes in a cluster? Uh, well, the Docker thing is just containers, right? Containers at the node, containers at the host. That means you end up with quite a lot of complexity on the node that you didn't really need um, because you were doing all the stuff for the UX that you needed a user to see at the cluster level and you now have to have that on every node. Um, again, Kubernetes, it's pod specs, it's um, this pod spec idea. Garden uses a container spec. 
Um, what's a container spec? A container spec is a cut down, simplified API that's built just to be a cell level API. It's not built for a user to use. We do that at the cluster level. And it's proven cross-platform. So we have implementations for Windows. It doesn't have the features that aren't cross-platform inside the API. And it can evolve along with the overall system. Um, so now, Garden Run C is really a very small piece of glue that just wires Run C into the rest of the system with an API that's extremely simple but tailored for Diego and tailored for an orchestrator to use rather than for a user to use because they're fundamentally different things. So the summary. Thank you. So yeah, we basically, in, in reverse order, Garden Run C is a tiny wrapper around Run C. We're using uh, a common code base, common code with Docker, and this means that uh, this code base is maintained by a huge community, essentially. And uh, the wrapper is small, it's, it's easy to maintain, it can, it's easy to secure, well, sort, sort of. And, um, and we're using the Garden API still, which is cross-platform, it's proven, it's been in Cloud Foundry for some time now. And the second bit is Cloud Foundry. We have the haiku, everyone sticks to it. Here's my code. But you can also really say, here's my container, and you can, you can still deploy your container, you can still treat Cloud Foundry as a container orchestrator. The system is end-to-end -end either way. So the system is providing you with all the functionality you need, with metrics, with logging, with all this stuff, whether you're using the build packs or the containers. And you can use either or both. It doesn't really matter. Thank you. So I reckon we have about eight minutes if anyone has questions. So the question was whether this will be in the pivotal uh, Cloud Foundry release or just in the open release. Sure. Um, I think you'd have to ask pivotal. Um, uh, but it, I mean, it, it's, it's going through Diego's CI pipe by now. So I think, I think the intention from, from most people is that this will replace Garden Linux um, and will be the runtime that Diego uses. So uh, my question is, it's going to support the HTTP routing through Go Router, so it's going to support the TCP routing as well? Um, so because it, inside a container, I can listen to any port. Right. The question is, does this support HTTP routing and TCP routing? And yeah, that, that all happens higher up in the stack. Um, so all of that stuff should work, regardless of whether you use code or containers. All of the stuff should just work. So I can listen to any port? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I think we use the first exposed port in Docker by default at the moment. I don't know if we support multiple ports, but... Um, so there's another talk which is about container to container networking, which I think is after this talk, which is talking about those plans for doing networking between containers. Any other questions? Awesome.